Welcome to Visor Down, my name is Alex and we're going to put the Kawasaki Versus 1000 SE Grand Tourer up against the Energica Xperia head to head and we'll try and decide which one is the better pick as a Tourer. So why pick these two bikes you may ask as there are plenty of others out there? Well mostly because I've got a Versus in as a long term of the Visor Down. I picked her up in mid-March this year nicknamed to Verity and I'm just about to tick past 4,000 miles with her. I was also lucky enough to be invited to the launch of the Energy Xperia in Italy a month or so back. And also it's petrol versus electric, a sort of inverted commas old versus new, and even a David versus Goliath. The Energy Xperia is hoping to spearhead the way forward for future two-wheel transportation. And though certainly a polarizing topic, the recent launch ride in the Italian Dolomites was quite simply one of the best riding experiences I've ever had. If you've watched my previous head-to-head -head on this channel, I put the Honda NT1100 against the Yamaha Tracer 9 GT, and it's certainly worth a watch. I compared the spec of the two with points awarded for the winner of each category, including the engine handling, touring capabilities, spec and electronics, fun factor, plus a few words then on style, price, and finally picking a winner. So we'll do the same as that, and ultimately I'll try and figure out which one out of these two I'd rather take on a long tour. So the bikes, of course, the Kawasaki Versus 1000 SE Grand Tourer and Energica Xperia. These are both two heavyweight 2022 tourers, and having had the privilege to ride them both, I can truly say they are exceptionally capable as touring machines, but each in their own way. As a quick overview on both of these bikes, the Versus is quite possibly the most comfortable touring bike I've ever ridden. With a dab of performance character likening it to its ninja brothers, the Versus 1000 range comes in a few different guises, mostly distinguished by the SE, which grants electronic adjustable suspension, and the sort of Tora, Grand Tora spec, giving it full dress options on top. So top box and panniers, frame sliders, fog lights, heated grips, GPS bracket, adjustable screen, all that good stuff. You can pick up a top spec versus SE Grand Tora, 1000cc model, for around £17,269 in dealerships now. Compare that to the Energica Xperia, which is the latest model released from the all-electric Energica brand, and the only purpose-built Tora with the mod cons you'd expect here. So again, top box and panniers, heated grips, adjustable screen, the largest capacity battery on any electric motorcycle, and plenty of comfort. The Energy Kit Xperia is due to land in dealerships in around about August, priced up at £27,790, so a touch over 10 grand more than a top spec versus. I'll speak more about the price a little bit later on, but I will factor this in for the other points. First things first, the engine. So starting with a Versus, you'll find a 1043cc inline four cylinder with around 118 brake horsepower at 9,000 revs and 102 newton meters of torque at 7,500 revs. I found the motor itself an absolute peach to work with and paired with free rider mode, so rain, road, sport, it's superb fun to use whether riding solo with no boxes or two up for a full tour. Throttle response is outrageously smooth and it's just as happy at low speed as it is full tuck on motorway stints or pushing on twisty back roads. Simply put, I've had endless amounts of fun in sports mode here. For a big bike at 257 kilograms, she handles like a properly nimble sports tourer. The Xperia, on the other hand, houses a new and updated motor called the PMA Sim RM or Permanent Magnet Assisted Synchronous Reluctance Motor. With 306 volts of nominal power, peak is 102 brake horsepower around about 7,500 revs and 115 newton meters of torque or quoted 900 newton meters at the wheel with a 0 to 60 time of just 3.5 seconds. Though the top speed is limited to 112 miles per hour for the sake of range conservation, you do have a multitude of rider modes to play about with to alter engine braking, power, all of that. On the road, power is delivered surprisingly smoothly through the twist and go single gear. I say surprisingly, as you'd think 900 newton meters would just about rip your arms off. Weight is all low down and is on par with the Versus weighing in at 260 kilograms. I can't really see a clear winner in this category. They come from two different points of performance in a way, and the Energica power plant is revolutionary, light, small, powerful, and ultimately easy to get on with, but costly. The Versus feels like it's making use of a seriously refined and impressive unit, and two up you can comfortably exceed that 112 miles per hour limit you'll find on the Xperia. Though, of course, this is allegedly, I cannot recommend doing it for. But given both options, I would probably say the Versus wins this one. You've got gears, 
plenty of power, serious acceleration at any speed. It just makes me feel a little bit more childish than the electric motor. But before you hang up the levers, have a go on the energy car, it is great fun. Next round is handling. Simply put, this is also a very tricky matchup to call. The Xperia launch in the Dolomites pushed the limits with endless switchback hairpins, elevation changes and twisty segments, and it absolutely gobbled it all up. Weight is held low in the bike and smooth power delivery with the single gear made it easy to really focus on just riding the alpine roads and enjoying the scenery. Low speed riding is a tad unusual with no spinning centrifugal force beneath you to aid your balance, but cutting a sharp line on a hairpin was easy with the 15-13mm wheelbase, so 1513mm, and 17 inch hoops. Then opening up the throttle and entering warp drive does more than enough to satisfy. Oh, and there is also forward and reverse crawling speed options for moving about in tight spaces. Now having taken Verity the Versus to Wales, the Midlands, the Suffolk and Norfolk coast and everywhere in between, even just local jaunts, I can happily say that the handling on offer here is superb. Enter sports mode to remove some of the electronic intervention and you can fill the hills with the sound of mechanical music. The lean angle sensor adds to the thrill when you seek higher numbers, so I'm at a peak 40 degrees angle of lean at the moment, and I'm not quite sure I can beat that without heading to the track. It all feels balanced and controlled, nimble, with a comparative 1520, so 1520 mil wheelbase, and again, 17 inch hoops. And you can actually surprise a few who may take the large exterior size at face value. So my winner here, um, I'm gonna have to go with the Xperia and perhaps mostly down to the Dolomite launch route and just how capable it was out on the Alpine roads. Well worth a visit. Touring, sorry, the main event really. Touring is in the blood of both of these machines and they've both succeeded. There's a few different sections within Touring, so comfort, storage, pillion use. And I've carried a passenger for around 60 miles atop the Versus and sat on the back of the Xperia. So the Xperia is a tad taller with a 847mm seat, the Versus 840mm, but both are tall bikes. Comfort is therefore guaranteed and pillions on both of these bikes have a raised seat with low pegs for around 90 degrees of angle in your knee. Both top boxes have backrests or the option to have a backrest and adjustable screens on both are handy, though the Versus can't actually easily be adjustable whilst you're riding along. You have to jump off, twist one, twist the other and move it. A little bit of a faff. The Energica has USB ports in the dash, whilst the Versus has a universal plug instead. If going for a long weekend away, Xperia storage space has around 112 litres through the top box and panniers with very industrial looking boxes that don't quite match the style and there is no clean mount panniers. The Versus Grand Tourer has 103 litres of storage with a nice looking clean mount pannier system and a fairly nice looking top box. In any case, plenty of storage for both on a tour. But which would I prefer? I mean, the Energica certainly has enough power, does all the right things to make you smile later here. But right now, I'd opt for the internal combustion engine, in all honesty. It just has that little bit more character for me, makes the addicting popping and banging noise that we all love and it'll be easier to run when factoring in faster fill-ups and the abundance of petrol stations wherever you are in the world. I found a range of around 200 to 220 miles as expected with the Versys with the 21 litre tank. And though a quoted 261 miles at city speeds is theoretically possible with the Xperia, charging via DC fast charge is still an hour from nearly flat to full and you'll get probably around 160 miles with a mix of riding. As good as it gets for the electric at the moment on the market, but right now, Dinosaur Juice wins this touring round. Next up, electronics and spec. So you'll find electronically adjustable shower suspension on the SE spec Grand Tourer, allowing you to quickly select modes for single rider, rider with passenger, and both with or without luggage. I've had to add a few points extra preload with the luggage to firm it all up when I'm on there, but it's all very handy to do. The electronic suite controls wheelie control, traction control, cornering management. It's got electronic throttle valves, a quick shifter, cruise control, a TFT screen of analog display. It's all just good. I'd perhaps like a more integrated TFT with your smartphone, maybe with maps and smartphone controls, which exceeds that of the Rideology app from Kawasaki over a GPS bracket but it's got plenty of electronic stuff there. Although the H2SX does come with radar cruise control, which is lacking on this Versus model. 
and is overall a little bit more luscious in terms of the suite on the H2SX. Perhaps a place for an upgrade in the future, provided the price doesn't then rapidly increase. But as a Toro, you're sorted on the Versus. So the Xperia, there isn't really electronic suspension or anything smart in that sense, but it is a very electronic machine with cornering ABS, regenerative control for the engine braking, cruise control, loads and loads and loads of rider modes, and a nice TFT dash, but again, no real smartphone integration for diving deep into Apple or Android CarPlay bits. You'd expect the Xperia to win an electronics battle, but considering the vast price difference here as well, with no electronic suspension and no serious advantage past the motor, I'd have to go the Versus, so electronic suspension wins. Fun factor, it's a simple one, which is more fun. Well, both of them are great on the road, but perhaps the Xperia takes a short distance win here as you can charge it up at home for about a quid, get riding, then plug it back in when you get home. The Versus will spend a little bit more time then on the forecourt when you could be riding. So yeah, I mean, tours will slightly be longer on the Xperia because you'll have to purpose plan your charge stops and perhaps alter your route somewhat. But yeah, we're just gonna give the Xperia one point here for just being a little bit more accessible with the fun factor. Next up, style. In the eye of the beholder, of course, but where the Xperia has an air of Italian flair and style, perhaps influenced by the Multistrada, I mean, they look quite similar, the Versus is very utilitarian. I do like the style of the Versus, but the Xperia just nicks it with that little bit more style. And on the topic, the Verity Versus is in black with green accents and highlights, and the straight up green alternative color is much more appealing and a much more team green in my eyes. The Xperia is technically at the moment a first edition release, so it just gets a Bormio Ice colour, which is like a silvery colour, until Eichmer, where we'll no doubt see more options released as a sort of second wave. A very important category here is the price. So considering all of the above, the £17,269 tag for the Versus is realistically a clear winner over the £27,790 of the Energica. Though consider the fuel costs, minimal running cost of electric, current road tax incentives for electric, and the gap does diminish a little bit, but the Versus wins the price round. I mean, there is one thing to consider as well. Do you buy a bike in monthly installments or do you buy it in full? Because if it's over monthly costs, it may not be as much of a difference as you'd think, especially with fuel where it is but that's another story. So ultimately, winner. I mean, it looks like tallying up the scores, the Versus wins this head-to-head -head four to three. It's close, but I think it reflects which one I'd pick in reality. Whilst electric isn't far behind and it may change your overall use of a motorcycle and the way it rides, the way it works for touring with the added charging requirements, I think it's fair to say that until petrol gets too expensive and ultimately, new combustion engine sales are banned around 2035. We should all just get out there and enjoy, whether that's a petrol bike or an electric. But realistically, the Versus does win this head-to-head -head tour. Considering my last video, I put the Trace 9 GT as the winner. If I put the Versus and Trace 9 GT up against each other right now without delving into it, I'd probably still go for the Versus. Just sheer comfort wins out for me and it's just great fun on the road. In any case, I feel like we've been chatting for a long time here. So check out visordown.com for a full review of both machines, if not all of the machines that you'd ever want a review for. And check out our channel for more video reviews and features. Cheers for watching. Like if you liked, subscribe for more, and I'll catch you on the next one. Ciao.